this is John. Um, I'm an ecologist, he's an entomologist, and we're also nature photographers. And today we're gonna to talk about um, how to build a, a white box um, to have at home in your studio so you can have it accessible all the time and what you kind of what's really nice and what we like about ours. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we got uh, some questions about our white box setup. Uh, the other day and um, so we thought we would just do a video on how we built this uh, Mama Jamma <laughs> white box here that we, we use at home. So actually let's just start out by saying why did we build this and how is this better than those pop-up ones you can get off Amazon or those like collapsible Amazon boxes? Well Better, I guess, is, is a point of view. Um, I like this because it's structurally sound. Um, I like having the light reflect around inside the box, and this does a better job of that because it's opaque uh, versus the, on the sides, versus in tops and bottoms, versus the uh, tints, the light tints that are collapsible, which I totally use those as well. But in a studio situation where I don't have to worry so much about size and weight issues and things like that. Um, I, I like this. It really was modeled after um, using foam core um, as a, a, a box like this that we used to do with Bugshot and still do sometimes these workshops that we teach. And again, the idea is that's opaque, the light can reflect around here. So this is just a more permanent version of say a foam core light box. Okay. So how did you build it then? So this is made out of uh, extruded PVC. Uh, it goes by a number of different names. Um, one of the names out there is Sintra. Uh, and it comes in four by eight foot sheets, much like plywood. Uh, this is half inch. You can get it from uh, various plastic dealers. And it's really easy to work with. You can cut it with a table saw, jigsaws, and, and conventional saws like that really easily. The only issue is that the... You need to keep your broom handy. The, that's right. <laughs> the, only, the shavings um, are very are statically charged, and so it can, can really attach to you and your, your equipment and everything else if you don't have a dust system, dust collection system. But it's really easy to work with um, in terms of cutting screw driving screws through and so on yeah it's real soft so uh the the box itself is just this centra um it is got sides tops and bottom the back can be detached uh as it is right now um which allows light to to uh freely escape from the back i can completely remove it uh, but it can be but there is a back that i can attach because sometimes i'm photographing things some insects, some other things like say snakes or something like that where I really need um, more confinement. And so I wanted to make it where I did have the option for a back if I needed it. And then I'm using uh, four flashes typically, but I actually have room for eight the way I built this, four on each side. And uh, I am using the Vivitar 283 flashes, which are an older, Vivitar Flash that are really workhorses. They don't make them anymore, but you can still get them on eBay pretty easily. Um, one of the reasons why I use those types of flashes is because I had a ton of them uh, for some other projects. And then also they have a auto thyristor or a, what they call a VP1 uh, adapter that you can put on them, which is what these are up here. And they're just potentiometers that allow you to control the power. They're manual flashes. So these actually were in, in right here, right? They were attached here? That's correct. They still uh, could be. Uh, this is a, a cord that allows you to have it off the, the, the camera. And then I just built this box with these VP1 controllers, these potentiometers, so that I can, from right here, photographing, easily come up here, turn on or off each flash independently and control their power without having to try to, to get to any one of these uh, flashes independently. So can you talk a little bit about, like maybe somebody at home wants to try these with these Vivitars? What's going on here with all these cords? Um, well, clearly they need to be dusted is the first thing I <laughs> noticed, but um, so the flash, let me just uh, unplug one here and show you. 
Oh, there's another reason why I use these flashes too. I'm just thinking about it as I see them. Um, that is that um, you, they it comes, there's an a, uh, AC adapter called the SV4, which plugs into it. And so that's really nice in a situation like this because I don't ever, these aren't using batteries. This is all AC power. So I don't have to worry about them uh, bat, you know, keeping batteries in them or keeping batteries charged. So that's one advantage, I think, to, to using these types of flashes in a system like this. The other, like I mentioned, is that um, they, have, they come with an auto thyristor uh, that plugs in right here, but they have this adapter called a VP1, uh, which you can um, get separately, and it can plug into the flash directly like that. That just, that just controls the power of your flash. Exactly. Much, right? It's no. a potentiometer that just manually allows you to dial up or down the power of the flash. Yeah. All I've done, they also make a, a cord uh that is um plugs into here and then um so you can have the vp1 off the flash uh and all i've done is taken that cord uh on each of these flashes and created a, a controller box up here where the vp1s can fit into I can shut the power off on the flash or, again, control the, the power from the flash right there. And did you make this box or did you get it somewhere? I made that. You made that box. So you need to have a little bit of uh, soldering skills. And, uh... Yeah, um, but it's not too bad. The uh, way that these flashes are fired is that I'm on one side, one flash over here, I've got a Cowboy Studio transmitter and receiver. Um, transmitter on the camera, receiver on the flash. The rest of them are all optical slaves. Again, a benefit of that is simply I don't have to worry about batteries on any uh, additional receivers. That doesn't work very well if you're shooting with multiple people or you've got other flashes going off around you, which does actually happen here sometimes with our high speed setup behind me. But um, it is... Um, a, a great way to again reduce battery consumption uh, when when using this. So I uh, usually I'm using four flashes, but can do up to eight, and I have them behind a, a sheet of perspex that acts as diffusion. Uh, I typically shoot with them on the top, angled towards the roof, so that they basically no light is going to be directly hitting the uh, from the flash without going through diffusion first. The, the subject it bounces off the top after going through the, the perspex and then bounces around in the box. But I, if I need more light, uh, if I'm wanting to do you know, kind of fancy things or whatever, I, I do have the ability to put flashes at the bottom as well. So I can mix and match those however uh, I want. That's just attached with, bottoms are just attached with Velcro so they come off easily. Yeah, and that's just a, so that light doesn't escape through there. Inside, I have a couple of cold shoes, one in the front, one in the back. Those are just so that I can um, put a modeling light or if I wanted to a flash or anything else in there like that that I needed to put in there. My primary modeling light is just a, a light that, uh, LED light that comes through the top. What kind is that? This one is uh, Drucast uh, LED. And you got that off of Amazon or somewhere? Uh, probably B&H. B&H or yeah. Amazon. This one you can control the color temperature and power on, so it's kind of nice. Again, AC powered. Uh, so the only thing outside of the camera, of course, uh, and I could plug that into AC power, that for this whole setup that uses batteries is the Cowboy Studio receiver on one flash. Everything else is AC powered and controlled by a single... Um, uh, power strip. Um, these uh, flashes actually use these SB4 bricks to power them, so that's a little bit kludgy with power strips, but there's this really clever power strip that rotates around so you can get big bricks, big transformers like that on there, and um, it, it makes it uh, really nice and convenient. So I turn the whole thing on and off just with one switch back there. Um, the other reason for having a hole in the top is not just for a modeling lamp, but also for shooting um, straight down. So I want to get straight dorsal shots or, or shooting straight from uh, above a lot of times. And so what I'll do there is use some diffusion 
I'm like this is Roscoe Lux paper. I'll put it like there. I have different sizes, but let's say this was raised a little bit. Then I'm shooting straight down into that, either via the copy stand with, say, a stack shot or just holding the camera. Uh, and it's just another layer of diffusion, which really helps uh, with really reflective things. Um, and again, I have different sizes depending upon what height I've got the, uh, the actual uh, perspex there. And the rail is connected to the stack shot over here. So we can That's control. the stack shot controller, controller. correct. Yeah, right. so then it's all set up. We can very easily just stack things, which we often do with small things like sosids or bark lice or anything, you know, that's that's sort of like that size where it's like the, um, you know, pinhead size critters. Okay, so thanks for watching our white box video. If you have any comments or questions about what we went over with our studio white box, please um, leave a comment below. We'd love to answer your questions on that. And um, you guys often think of things that um, we haven't thought of. So if you have anything that you think we should add to our white box, also put it down there in the comment section. Um, if you could like the video and um, subscribe uh, and click the bell, uh, that would be awesome. Um, and uh, let us know what kind of videos you'd like us to do in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.